Thank you. The Secret by Barry Kinsella. Do you know the legend of Glamis Castle? There's reputed to be a secret room hidden within its walls. Glamis is the hereditary home of the Bow's Lions, the Queen Mother's family. In the 1920s at a house party, some of the younger members had a clever idea. They hung a towel out of every window of the impressive front frontage, reasoning that the window with no towel would be the secret room. Sure enough, as they gathered outside, they spotted a solitary room without a towel. Unfortunately, the Laird of Glamis was alerted to their scheme, forbidding any further investigation. My house isn't like Glamis at all. For a start, it's not a castle, standing in its own grounds. It's a Victorian detached residence of some size. It does share something with Glamis, and that's a secret room. We discovered it by accident soon after moving in. Upstairs on the second floor was a short corridor with only one room off and ending in a blank wall. In certain lights it was possible to see the outline of what must have been a door beneath the plaster. As we progressed in our redecoration, my father attacked the crumbling plaster exposing a solid, close-fitting entrance door. We were excited at the thought of what might lie behind. At last, my father managed to force it open. We eagerly crowded into the windowless room. The only light from outside was by two air bricks set high up. Inside was a chair and a small table. On it was two thick books. The books were older than the house, going back to the 18th century, on scientific subjects and quite boring. The room was very small, and so, wanting to utilise the end of the corridor for a large bookcase, which just squeezed between the walls, my father closed the room up, boarding over the door and replastering. After the bookcase was in place, you would never know there was anything behind it. My father and I promptly forgot about it. Then one day, entering the loft, I came across a trap door inset in the floor. I realised at once that it must be above the secret room. As an avid collector of books, which were already stacked in every room, I set about installing a loft ladder to gain access to what was now valuable extra space. In no time at all, the walls were lined with volumes, leaving just enough space to walk round the table and reach the pull-down ladder. Years passed. My father died. I still live here on my own. That's not quite correct. I'll tell you what happened last summer, then you can make up your own mind. Several miles from here is an establishment which contains criminals of unsound minds with only moorland between. One afternoon working in the garden, I became aware of a smartly dressed man watching me from the gate. It appeared he was walking in the area, although there was no sign of a rucksack or suitable footwear. My visitors are few and far between, so I invited him in, and we shared tea together. Eagerly I inquired his destination, and how far he had travelled. His replies were vague. His interest was in the television set, set in the corner of the lounge. I was just getting up to turn it off to continue our conversation when the news bulletin came on. He raised his hand to stop me and appeared engrossed in the stories. The screen filled with a the screen filled with a familiar scene. 
the moors near my home, with a line of policemen advancing across it. The announcer's words cut in. David Sanders, the serial killer, escaped this morning and is believed to be still in the vicinity of the prison. People are warned not to approach him as he is highly dangerous. David Sanders, for it was, he stood up and turned the set off. They've got that right, he said quite calmly. They'll be here soon and I'm bound to search the house. You must hide me. If you don't, I will kill you and take my chance. I'm not going back. Even as he spoke, the image of the secret room flashed into my mind. My only chance of survival. Speaking as if I was terrified, I told him about the concealed room, with access only from the loft. The trap door covered with carpet. No one would ever find it. Threatening me, he made me lead him upstairs. Flinging back the carpet and moving the trapdoor aside, I showed him how to operate the drop-down ladder. With more threats, he climbed down into the room, instructing me to tell him when the police had been and gone. Hurriedly putting the carpet back into place, I went down to answer the front door. The police were already outside. They searched the house from top to bottom and the outbuildings, all the while telling me of the murders that Sanders had committed. When they had gone, I had a brief struggle with my conscience, but decided to stay with my original course of action. You see, when I had concealed the trap doors with the carpet, I managed to drag a heavy chest across it. There was no way the door could be opened from underneath. David Sanders would be no loss to the community. For three or four days afterwards, I could hear heavy thumping noises from the loft. Gradually, they ceased. I miss some of the books in the secret room. I'll never be able to go down there and get them. It's really, I'm really quite squeamish. One day, when I've gone, someone will open the trap door and the secret will be revealed. Until that time comes, I will share it with David Sanders. Barry writes all his own poetry and short stories. To see more of his work, please go to Amazon.com and simply type in his name, Barry Kinsella. Thank you.